chung năng động sáng tạo và tạo cảm giác truyền cảm hứng học tập như thế này và hãy cùng mình khám phá xem trung tâm này có điều gì đặc biệt nhé Um, trước khi bắt đầu buổi học thì um, mình xin nhắc lại một lần nữa đi mọi người có thể mở hết video lên được không ạ? Để thầy giáo có thể tương tác dễ với cả mọi người ạ. Và thầy cũng biết là những bạn nào đang có mặt ở trong phòng học. Uh, cảm ơn Ngọc Linh, cảm ơn bạn uh, Huyền Nguyễn. Acer Nguyễn Niên. An ơi bạn có thể mở uh, video lên được không ạ? Bạn Hồng, bạn Quyên Đỗ đã mở rồi ạ. Uh, Nghiêm Thu, Trang, An, Lê, Thúy, Diệu Ngân, mọi người có thể mở lên đúng không ạ? Trang, Minh Thư, Bạn Thiện, Bạn Tuấn Dũng. Chúng ta mở video lên để thầy giáo có thể dễ dàng uh, tương tác với mọi người hơn và buổi học cũng diễn ra được chất lượng và xuân sẻ hơn ạ. Với cả một số bạn thì chắc là vì laptop không có cam thì um, chúng ta sẽ cố gắng lắng nghe thầy giáo ấy Còn những bạn nào mà có thể mở video lên thì mọi người lưu ý là mở video lên giúp mình, giúp GLN nhé. Thì thầy giáo có thể dễ dàng tương tác hơn. Thì chắc là bây giờ chúng ta sẽ chuẩn bị bắt đầu vào buổi học cùng với cả thầy Terry đấy ạ. Uh, Terry ơi. We can start now. Okay, let's start. Let's get ready. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today we're going to look at um, task two writing. 
Uh, we'll start with some of the um, basic questions and then look at how to um, use linking words and phrases. And then we will look at some examples um, from the um, British Council. So we're going to start today with a, a quiz. So on the chat, uh, please put your answer on the chat. And let's get the first question on the screen. All right, first question. Now, how many words does a candidate have to write for a task to answer? How many words? Just write your answer on the chat. Does anybody know the answer? Yeah, it's 250 words. Is there a maximum number of words? Yes or no? Is there a maximum number? Is it a good idea to write 350 words? Yeah, there's no maximum, but uh, I would say that uh, when you practice, your maximum should be 280 words. That's your maximum, because you've only got 400, um, and you've only got 40 minutes to um, write an answer. So too many words can have a negative effect on your writing. So there's the answer on the screen. Next question. How many paragraphs should you write for a task two essay? How many paragraphs? So we've got three and four, three and four. Actually for task two, it's four or five, depending on the type of essay. Some essays, um, must be only four paragraphs. Others, you can change your style of writing to five paragraphs instead. And again, we'll have a little look at that as to why you might write five paragraphs instead of four. Next question. What should candidates do at the end of a paragraph? What should they do? Does anybody know? <clears throat> Not really, no, this, this is to help the examiner. What should you do? No, at the end of a paragraph, not check mistakes, no. Think about how you can help the examiner. The examiner is your friend. What can you do? No. Answer. Leave a blank line. So when you think about it, when you write on a computer, a computer will automatically leave a blank line between paragraphs, and you should do that when writing on paper. It helps the examiner to immediately see where your paragraphs are. Also, if your um, handwriting is um, untidy, then it does help uh, the reader to um, kind of um, see how you've organized your writing and the, your vocabulary uh, a little easier. Next question, we'll find it. Why should you not use words such as um, can't, I've and don't in writing? Why should you not use words? 
like those. What's the problem using them? Yep, correct, because it's informal. Yep, that's the correct answer. Contractions should not be used in academic writing. They would be marked as grammar errors. So in English, we speak contractions. We don't write them uh, when we're writing essays. Next question. How many sentences should you write for a conclusion paragraph? and introduction and conclusion paragraphs. How many sentences? Um, so answer, two sentences are normal. Uh, sometimes you can write three, uh, but you need to remember that uh, the examiner's not really too interested in your introduction. Um, the examiner is more interested in um, the body paragraphs and your conclusion. So uh, writing a long introduction is a bad idea. Two sentences is enough. So basically you would have the topic sentence and the second sentence would be your opinion and maybe in addition, what you are going to write in the essay. Next question. Why is it a bad idea to write too many long sentences? Why is that a bad idea? Too many long sentences. Why is that a bad idea? Yeah, it's correct. So it's called, um, we put the answer on. So there is a greater chance of grammar vocabulary errors reducing understanding. So in the um, <coughs> marking system, it's called poor coherence. So I'll just put that in the chat. Poor coherence means the reader finds it difficult to understand. Next question. What happens if the examiner cannot read your writing? What will happen? Believe me, it happens a lot. The examiners have problems reading handwriting. What will happen? Um, yeah, um, Hugh and Cap, you're uh, nearly right now. How can the examiner mark you if uh, the examiner can't read your writing? Um, so the answer? The words will be crossed out and you will lose marks. Next one, what is the easiest way a candidate can change a task to band six to a 6.5? What's the easiest way? So you've written an essay, nice essay, you got a band six. How can you improve that quite easily to a 6.5? What can you do? Uh, well, your grammar is marked band six, so your grammar can be understood, although there are errors. What else could you do? Again, your vocabulary is okay. It can be understood. And actually improving vocabulary and grammar um, is um, for many students a slow process. It takes time. 
something you can do quite quickly. Uh, we don't use idioms in writing. Collocations again refers to um, coherence. No, something else you need to focus on the task response area by giving comparative answers between Vietnam and another country. Easiest way to improve your band score. So an IELTS writing question will never actually say anything about Vietnam or another country, never, because it's an international test. And what a lot of students do, they, they just simply write about uh, their experience in Vietnam. But if you can compare your experience in Vietnam with another country, maybe America, Australia, or somewhere in Europe, then that will give a more balanced answer to the question. And you will get more marks for doing that. Let's move to the next question. To get about seven for vocabulary, how many errors are allowed? How many errors to get about seven for vocabulary? What do you think? Is it five errors, ten errors, or something different? How many errors are allowed? Anybody want to guess? Five errors, five, five to seven errors, three, maybe five. Yeah. Answer, occasional errors in word choice, spelling and or word formation. So occasional errors. So there isn't actually a number and it does depend on the errors. For example, spelling errors are regarded as simple errors. Um, inappropriate vocabulary, again, is regarded as a simple error, but trying to use good vocabulary and making a minor mistake is quite acceptable for band seven. So it depends on the type of error. All right, let's move to uh, another part of the uh, presentation today. So we're going to look at linking words and phrases. Okay. So um, at school, um, I've actually seen teachers do it in some schools in Hanoi. Uh, you're kind of given the same linking words and phrases to do all the time. And it doesn't, uh, and it doesn't really vary much from essay type to different essay type. However, that will give you problems if you do that in IELTS writing. Uh, there are actually eight different types of IELTS um, essays, eight essay types, and the linking words phrases quite often change depending on the type of essay. So um, it's a bit difficult to do this online, but let's have a look at, uh, this is something I would do in the classroom. So the ones on the left, A to N, are the kind of linking phrases maybe you would be told to use at school. What I want you to try and do is link A to N to 1 to 14. So, for example, some people say, how can you match that? So, somebody's got A to 5, yeah, the general view has been that, B to 10, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, they're correct, C to 13 nowadays, so uh, in today's world, yeah, correct. Any others you think you can match? Uh, 
Uh, while you're thinking, I would point out uh, all the slides today. You can get a copy from GLN um, if you want to. If you want a copy, H211. Therefore, as a result, yeah, you could match those two. That's quite correct. Yeah. E to three on the one hand to nevertheless, in spite of this, no, E to three is not correct. Uh, J to six, for example. Yeah, one example is, yeah, it's correct. N to 12, yeah, firstly to first of all. D to nine, besides matches, there is the also, also, yeah. K to 14, especially matches in particular. Yeah, you could possibly do that. I to four because uh, as a result, yeah, because of, you could do that, correct, yeah. F to three, yeah, F you can match to three, that's correct. L to one in addition, furthermore in addition, yes, you can do that. Uh, some of these I would point out, you can uh, use more than once. All right, let's have a look at the answers then I'll explain it a bit further. J to six, J, yes, you can do J to six. Yeah, it's quite possible. Here we are, and here's the answers. So some people say um, the obvious one, the general view has been that, in my opinion, as far as I'm concerned, nowadays in today's world, besides, furthermore, in addition, on the one hand, it is true to say that. On the other hand, having said that, or despite these drawbacks, if you're doing, for example, a, an advantages, disadvantages essay, you can use that. However, nevertheless, in spite of this, therefore, as a result, because, as a result, or our bill because of, for example, one example is, or for instance, especially in particular, in addition, a related criticism, you could use that. Also, there is, or, or also, um, firstly, um, first of all, uh, notice the last one is for sequencing only. It's, that means it should not be used to start a paragraph. Don't do it, it uh, would get a low mark for doing that. So look at the li little note at the bottom. A to N are lower band score cohesive devices, discourse markers. So the correct term for linking words phrases are cohesive devices or discourse markers. So the ones on the left would get a lower band score. And they tend to be the ones that you are taught at school in uh, Vietnam. The ones on the right are what are taught in the schools in England or GCSEs. Yeah, you can use in addition uh, more than once, you see. Uh, some of these you can use as more than one match. So the ones on the right are used in England by teenagers for their GCSE English. Um, classes and you would get a much higher band score by understanding how to use the ones on the right. Uh, I would add there are more linking words phrases that could be used but um, now let's move on to how to write an IELTS essay. So we'll look at a few basics and then we'll move on to um, some examples. So how to write an IELTS essay. In this introduction lesson, you will find some guidance on how you should write an IELTS essay. It is important to learn about IELTS essays because there are different essay types and they will require different ways to answer them. So as I mentioned before, there are actually eight essay types on IELTS and you'll see a list in a few seconds. However, you will see from the guidance on this page, they can all follow the same basic structure. Uh, 
<coughs> so these are some of the types of IELTS essays you can get in the test. So agree, disagree, discuss two opinions, advantages, disadvantages, two question type essays, causes and solutions, causes and effects, problems and solutions. Um, other ones that you could get is the traditional opinion essay, although you don't see that uh, very often these days. You could also have um, causes and measures essays, again, it doesn't happen very often. And there are actually two types of advantages, disadvantages essays, one with, with an opinion, one with no opinion. Uh, the no opinion essay is more often on the, um, not on the academic test, but on the general training test. Now, of these types, which do you think are on the test most often at the moment? Which two are on the test most often at the moment? Anybody want to try and guess? Anybody know? What do you think? Is it advantages, disadvantages, or problem solutions, causes and effects? Which ones are on the test most often at the moment? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, discuss two opinions and discuss. Uh, is or discuss two views is on the test a lot at the moment and the other one is agree disagree uh, you don't get as many advantages disadvantages questions these days or problem solutions causes effect questions they don't seem to be on the test as much as i said before traditional opinion essays are not on the test as much uh, also, uh, the, the two question type essay, that seems to be appearing on the test more often these days. But uh, the first two, agree, disagree, discuss two opinions or discuss two views, are definitely the two most often on the test at the moment. And in some ways, they are more difficult than the other question types. Now, what does it say underneath here? So uh, let's have a quick look. So not every essay will fit one of these patterns, but many do. You may get some of the task, these tasks mixed up. For example, you could ask to be given your opinion on an issue and then discuss the advantages or disadvantages of it. The golden rule is to always read the question very carefully to see exactly what you have been asked to do. And that's really good advice. Now, uh, the other day I was marking some uh, mock tests and several of the um, students had didn't understand the essay type and they wrote a different type of essay to the actual what the question was asking and that severely reduced their band score. So you've got to be very careful about what type of essay you are going to um, uh, write about. So how do I write an IELTS essay? Uh, well, in order to do this, let us first look at a sample question. Uh, so you should spend about 40 minutes on this task and write about the following topic. And 40 minutes is really important. Um, if I give uh, my students writing homework, uh, some of them spend a lot longer than 40 minutes now, at the beginning of a course, OK, that's not really a problem uh, because I want them to understand how to write an essay. But as you write more essays, you have got to time yourself because uh, it's no good 
the right of the MSA in 45 minutes, because that will have a negative effect on your TAS1 writing in the test. And it's very difficult to, to do a TAS1 writing answer in 15 minutes. So you've got to be very careful with the time. So let's have a look at this question. Uh, in the last 20 years, there have been significant developments in the field of information technology, or IT. For example, the World Wide Web and communication by email. However, these developments in IT are likely to have more negative effects than positive in the future. To what extent do you agree with this view? So, you are simply asking whether or not you agree. Therefore, it doesn't mean that you have to agree. You can disagree, as long as you explain that in the essay. And never be afraid to disagree with the question. Uh, if you just think uh, what the question is actually stating is not true, then you are quite entitled to explain why in your essay. And in fact, doing that, you could even get more marks. So as usual, it says, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own experience or knowledge. Now, students often get confused with that. Give and include relevant examples from your own experience or knowledge. So some students seem to think, well, that is from my own personal experience, how it has affected me. No, the question doesn't mean that. It's experience that you have seen or been told about. So it, you could have seen it on the news. You could have um, seen it on television, even seen it on somewhere like YouTube or social media. It's not actually asking for something that's actually happened to you. It's from your experience. So it's a more general statement, not and doesn't specifically mean your own specific experience. So don't get confused with that. So an IELTS essay is structured like any other essay. You just need to make it shorter. And there are three key elements. So an introduction, body paragraphs, usually two, and a conclusion. And we will, we will look at each of these in turn uh, using the essay question above as an example. So let's move to the introduction. So you should keep your introduction for the IELTS essay short. As I mentioned before, remember you only have 40 minutes to write the essay and some of this time needs to be spent planning. Therefore, you need to write your introduction fairly quickly so you can start writing your body paragraphs. So in the introduction, you should do two things. State the topic of the essay, Using some basic facts that you may be able to take from the question. Notice it says you may be able to take from the question, not copy from the question. And say what you're going to write about. And here's an example introduction for the um, essay about IT. So the last two decades have seen enormous changes in the way people's lives are affected by IT. However, while these technological advances have brought many benefits to the world, I would agree that these IT developments will result in more negative impacts than positives. So we have two sentences and the writer clearly states their opinion and basically what they're gonna write about. So the theme of the essay is very much going to be why they think uh, there are more negative than positive. Uh, what you must never write there is I partly agree or disagree. You never do that. 
you must also you must always take one side either there's more positive or there's more negative if you think it's very similar just say the I, I believe the slightly more positive than negative but never say you partly agree because then you're not having a clear point of view so as you can see the first sentence makes sure it refers to the topic it and uses facts about it taken from the question note that these are paraphrased you should not copy from the question and the second part clearly sets out what the essay will be about and confirms the opinion. Some questions may not ask for an opinion, but this one does. For example, a um, problem solution essay does, doesn't always ask you for an opinion. Let's have a look at uh, body paragraphs. Oops. Uh, have a look at body paragraphs. So, uh, for an IELTS essay, you should have two or three body paragraphs, no more and no less. Uh, I have seen essays with four body paragraphs. Uh, when I was at the British Council, but these were like band eight and band nine essays. So for most students, two or three body paragraphs is a requirement. Uh, for your body paragraph, each paragraph should contain one controlling idea and have sentences to support this. So let us look uh, at the first paragraph of the essay about IT. The essay is about the benefits and drawbacks of IT, so these will need to be discussed in separate paragraphs. So here is the first body paragraph. So we start with one of the linking words you saw on the list earlier. It's true to say that email has made communication, especially um, abroad, much simpler and faster, resulting in numerous benefits for commerce and business. Furthermore, good linking word, the World Wide Web means that information on every conceivable subject is now available to us. And then we have the example. So for example, people can access news, medical advice online, education courses, and much more via the internet. And then a final statement. It is evident that these improvements have made life far easier and more convenient for the large numbers of people and will continue to do so for, so for decades to come. So this paragraph has got four sentences and a paragraph should have a maximum of five sentences and a good writer should be able to write a paragraph in four sentences. Um, why would be five sentences well if your writing's a bit weaker sometimes it might be better to include a second example but good writers only one example let's have a look at the next body paragraph oh so the controlling idea in this first paragraph is the benefits of it and there are two supporting ideas which are underlined. No drawbacks are discussed as the paragraph will then lose coherence. So in agree, disagree or advantage, disadvantage style essays, do not put advantages, disadvantages or positives, negatives in the same paragraph. It will, could be quite confusing and you will lose marks for coherence. So keep your reasons for agreeing separate from your reasons for disagreeing. Uh, most of the essay will focus on the negative aspects of IT. As the writer says, there are more negative effects in the introduction. So the next two paragraphs about these. The topic sentence in the next paragraph therefore tells us we are changing the focus to the negative points. 
So this is a five paragraph essay. So the contrasting word or phrase is nevertheless, it shows we're going to change the focus in the next paragraph. Nevertheless, the effects of this new technology have not all been beneficial. For example, many people feel that the widespread use of email is destroying traditional forms of communication, such as letter writing, telephone and face-to-face -face conversation. This could result in a decline in people's basic ability <coughs> to socialize <coughs> and, and interact with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. So this paragraph is three sentences because we are going to do two sentences on the negative side. It's a slightly shorter paragraph. And the final paragraph gives the last negative effect. The large size of the World Wide Web has, addition, has additionally meant that it is nearly impossible to regulate and control. This has led to many concerns regarding children accessing unsuitable websites and viruses. Unfortunately, this kind of problem may even get worse in the future, at least until more leg regulated systems are set up. So again, three sentences because we're doing two negative paragraphs. So well, each paragraph has one main focus. Let's have a look at the conclusion. So the conclusion needs only needs to be two sentences. And you can do the following, restate what the essay is about, so the topic. So you can rewrite the last sentence of your introduction using different words. That's quite an easy way to do it and give some thoughts about the future. So here's the example. In conclusion, developments in IT have brought many benefits, yet I believe developments related to new technology are less, are, are likely to produce many negative effects in the future that must be addressed if we are to avoid damaging impacts on individuals and society. So what we have here is a conclusion with a, quite a long sentence, but it is divided into two parts, and that meets the requirements of the examiner. And the writer's viewpoint is very clear there to see and understand. And um, we'll just put the whole essay together on one slide so you can see how it's organized. And I, th uh, I seem to remember this essay, well, I, it, I think it says there are 287 words. So it is about the right length. It's not too long and it covers all the main points in the question. So the other thing to note here is that uh, this is a five paragraph essay and the writer is focusing more on the negative than the positive. Therefore, the first body paragraph should be about the positive and the next two body paragraphs about the negative. And that will mean that paragraph four leads into the conclusion, which confirms um, there are more negative effects. So don't write, so if your opinion is there's more negatives, don't write about negatives first and then put the positives at the end before the conclusion. That would make your structure uh, wrong and you can lose marks for um, coherence and cohesion. Well, it's cohesion where you would lose marks. And if we bring up the examiner's comments about this. 
So uh, I don't know who the examiner was, but this was uh, an examiner at the British Council making comments about this essay. Um, the IELTS essay introduction talks in general about the increasing use of IT, thus introducing the topic well. The thesis then clearly sets out the writer's opinion. So sometimes the writer's opinion in the introduction is called the thesis statement. The following paragraph mentions the present benefits of these developments, but the opening sentence in the third paragraph is a quality, qualifying statement. Nevertheless, not all, all the effects. So the writer can now focus on the negative elements. The fourth paragraph provides two other ne negative examples, lack of regulation of viruses. And both paragraphs suggest that these problems will continue in the future. The essay concludes with a clear opinion that agrees with the statement. Overall, it is a well-balanced text that mentions the present situation. This has made life, but more importantly, also refers to the future of IT likely to increase and might get worse. So I'm not qu quite sure uh, what the examiner gave as a band mark for that, but I would say it's uh, somewhere in the region of 7.5 to a band eight essay. Let's have a look at uh, something else. So this is one. This slide's called "Worries About Not Knowing Enough." Um, about the IELTS essay topics. So students uh, often say to me, I don't really know much about this topic. Can you help me? And uh, let's have a look at this question. I'm due to take my IELTS test in a few weeks and I'm really worried about writing task two. I'm worried I won't know enough about the subject they are asking me to write about. I have looked at a few pra uh, practice papers and they are all subjects I feel I couldn't write well about. Uh, there has also, there has been no mention of supported information sheets on these topics. Is there any, and how has anyone else dealt with this? Any help opinions will be much appreciated. So let's have a look uh, at the answer. So, you are not likely to find worksheets specifically geared towards the kinds of topics you will get for your essay, except in course books related to IELTS, but they of course can't cover every, uh, anywhere near everything. Uh, so to give you an example, I understand that on um, the IELTS test for task two writing, there are about 200 different essay questions available for the test, about 200. And it's very difficult <coughs> to have a lot of knowledge about every topic. So IELTS tends to pick the kind of issues that are topical around the world today, or things or, or that always rise as issues. So they do actually tend to set essay questions about things that are in the news. So if we take the example of education, uh, you might get things like, why do young people feel negative about learning? Who should pay for education? Should girls and boys learn together? Co-education. Co should homeschooling be allowed? All these kind of things uh, are topics that are discussed by people the government, and newspapers, and so on, now and again in most countries. So, <coughs> sorry, just want to have a drink. So, as part of IELTS, it is useful if you have a basic knowledge of the kind of issues that are going on around the world. Well, uh, you won't ever get um, asked directly about emotive things such as war, politics, or religion. This would, uh, so the kind of topics would be expected of you if you're a student at most English-speaking universities. 
as you would need to get involved in discussions as part of your studies. So by reading around and learning about current uh, issues for IELTS, you are also preparing yourself for university. You need to improve your reading for IELTS anyway, so read about the kind of topics that come up in the writing test. Um, but that said, you're, not, you're certainly not expected to be some kind of expert. Remember, you're getting graded on your grammar, lexis, or vocabulary, coherence, and cohesion. You are also getting graded on task achievement. So task achievement is about how you answer the question. So you are expected to brainstorm ideas to answer the question and to explain them. But the idea is up to you. It must be related to the question and be coherent. But the examiner can't mark you down because you don't think it is clever enough. So the examiner's not really too interested in your opinion. The examiner wants to know what your ideas are. So don't get stressed about being an expert on all the different topics or waste time in the exam trying to come up with a perfect idea. As you don't have much time, what is more important is being able to quickly brainstorm some ideas and some support for them. So using examples, uh, rather than those ideas being amazing. Yes, um, as I said before, uh, if you want a copy of all these slides and uh, ask uh, GLN for them and you can have a copy, it's not a problem. We, we always make these slides available to everybody. Uh, to finish off, uh, of course, um, if you do know about the topic, you are lucky, but some people who do know about the topic may not do well if they misunderstand the question or don't organize their ideas well. So knowing about the topic is no guarantee of a good score. Practice uh, in writing is more important. So to sum up, Read around the kind of topics that come up uh, as that will help your reading anyway. Practice answering essay questions and you'll improve your school, uh, your skills at coming up with ideas, even if you don't know much about the topic. The important thing is about how you present your ideas, not that you are showing you are an amazing expert on this subject. So don't get stressed out. Uh, thinking that you're going to get a really difficult topic to answer. Good. Uh, somebody asked about correcting writing. Uh, there are uh, uh, people on the internet that do uh, writing correction. Uh, just do a search on Google. Um, I, I'm not aware of any software. Uh, 10 main errors, task two writing. Let's have a look at these. So number one, poor planning. You should take three to five minutes to plan and write. Write it on a piece of paper before you write your answer. A poorly planned essay will reduce your band score by one. Number two, not fully answering the question. This will reduce your band score by 0.5 to 1. Do not make the mistake of focusing on using examples from a previous essay with a similar topic. Number three, a poor introduction. This will reduce your band score by 0.5. An introduction, as we said before, should be two sentences from about 25 to 35 words. You need to understand how to write a thesis statement and when to give or not give your opinion. Number four, poor paragraphing. The number of words should range from six to 110, depending on the number of essay paragraphs with four or five sentences. Next, using too many examples in a paragraph only one or two are allowed. 
be too general with your examples instead of using real life examples will limit the level of your band score. So do not put too many examples in a paragraph. That's often a mistake by, made by uh, <coughs> people learning to write essays. Number six, poor coherence, often because of incorrect sentence structure. So when translated to Vietnamese to English, incorrect or over complex vocabulary, or the sentence is too long. All of these can reduce your band score by 0.5 to 1. Uh, next, incorrect use of discourse markers. So we looked at those before. These are used to link together paragraphs and examples using a low level or the wrong linker will reduce your band score by 0.5 to 1. The examiners are very strict with their marking of use of linkers. Poor punctuation, especially when writing longer sentences. In a paragraph, you need to demonstrate the ability to correctly write at least one long sentence with the correct linking word and phrase and the correct punctuation. Not checking your essay. Uh, a lot of students, uh, I, I see this in class, they have to be reminded to check their essay. And when doing it, focus on grammar and vocabulary errors. Not checking can be the difference between band score 5.5 and a 6, or a 6.5 and a 7. You should spend five minutes checking. Uh, believe me, every uh, grammar or vocabulary error you make, the examiner will see them. And finally, keep it simple. You will not impress the examiner by using unusual or too academic vocabulary. An examiner wants you to read your essay quickly without pausing to think what a word means. If an essay can be read and understood quickly, your band score will be reduced by 0.5 to 2. All right, final thing. Let's have a look at uh, one more example. This is another British Council example. <clears throat> and on agree, disagree, these are the different question types you'll get, four different question types on agree, disagree. And here's the question. So some people believe that unpaid community service should be a compulsory part of high school programs. For example, working for a charity, improving the neighborhood or teaching sports to younger children. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So in this example, here is the structure. <clears throat> so this is gonna be a four paragraph essay. And that means that the two So the two main paragraphs could have three or four sentences, depending if you have one or two examples. And here's a sample answer. So this one uh, focuses very much on the positive, which you can do with an agree disagree essay if the question simply focuses on why you would agree. I'm not going to read it all out, but I'll leave it on the screen for a minute or two so you can read it yourselves.
Okay, those, those of you asking for the slides, I've just sent a reminder to the GLN office to uh, let you have a copy of the slides. Uh, and then uh, at the end notes, it's type, this essay type can also be structured with one agree, one disagree paragraph, or even as we saw earlier, five paragraph essay, depending on the question. So the final slide. <clears throat> to finish. <clears throat> so, when answering a question which requires your opinion, like to what extent do you agree? Is it correct to look at both sides? <clears throat> like to a great, greater extent I agree, but to a lesser extent I disagree. No, you don't have to look at both sides. So the previous example is one example of that. You can com completely agree or disagree, making sure, of course, you state clearly that you 100% agree or disagree. That is usually the easiest way to answer these types of questions, of course. And that's also usually the best thing to do if your write writing skills are not so good. However, if someone wants a higher score, say band seven and above, and they have better writing skills, they should discuss both sides because it will look like a more sophisticated answer and so could potentially make a better impression on, on the examiner for things such as task response. So task response is how you answer the question. You can, of course, 100% agree or disagree with one side and still consider the other side by presenting someone else's views that are not the same as yours. So that is the general view of other people. So I've deliberately chosen uh, agree, disagree today as examples. Um, because in some ways, agree, disagree essays are slightly more complicated because there is not one set way of answering the question. <clears throat> so therefore, I've deliberately given you two different ways to answer uh, an agree, disagree question today. Now, how you approach answering an agree, disagree essay question Firstly, it does depend on the question. And secondly, depends on how confident you are in either simply agreeing or disagreeing or writing about both sides of the question. And really, only with practice will you develop the skills to be flexible in answering agree, disagree questions in different ways. So, um, I hope today has been useful. Um, all the examples you've had today are from the British Council. Um, and I do think um, the British Council's um, examples are some of the best available. Um, if you have any additional questions, then I'm quite happy to answer them. If you can't think of any now, then just uh, email the GLN office and uh, either myself or somebody will reply to your question. Um, 
next week we are going to look at um, part three speaking and I will be looking at examples of actual questions which are on the test at present and will are likely to continue on the test until the end of December this year. So to um, end today's um, workshop, I hope you found it useful. And if you want help with part three speaking, then uh, I look forward to uh, you uh, logging on next week and uh, looking at the examples I give you. So um, have a good uh, time for the rest of the day. And uh, thank you for um, uh, attending the workshop. Goodbye. Uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, cái, vậy là buổi uh, học của chúng ta, buổi học thứ hai trong uh, chuỗi uh, khóa học trực tuyến IELTS thì đã kết thúc. Thì hy vọng là với những chia sẻ của thầy Terry thì mọi người uh, cũng có những cái kiến thức và cũng uh, thu thập được những cái um, tips IELTS về uh, writing cho riêng mình. Uh, vào cái buổi uh, học tiếp theo vào thứ bảy tuần tới là ngày 18 tháng 7 thì chủ đề của chúng ta sẽ học về Speaking Part 3. Ờ, thì hẹn uh, gặp lại mọi người vào buổi uh, học ngày hôm đó nhé cũng sẽ thời gian cũng sẽ bắt đầu từ 10 đến 11 giờ thì uh, bọn mình mình cũng đã gửi link cho mọi người để uh, nhận slide của bài giảng ngày hôm nay thì mọi người vui lòng điền vào link đấy giúp mình thì Joan chỉ tổng hợp ở trong link thế thôi uh, thì uh, cũng tất cả mọi người đã nhận được hết link chưa ạ mọi người đều truy cập hết rồi đúng không ạ thì mọi người vui lòng điền vào uh, link đó thì Joan sẽ tổng hợp và gửi qua email cho mọi người Thank you, Terry. See you next week. Bye.